Have you ever wondered what really happens when a fly lands on your food? In today's video, we will explore the disgusting world of mouth parts, regurgitation, digestive juices, and potential contamination. Trust me, you won't ever look at the common housefly the same way again. Before we get into the nitty gritty, let's get to know our tiny and annoying airborne visitors a little better. Flies, those buzzing aerial acrobats, are far more than just annoying pests. They're incredible insects with a crucial role in ecosystems, from pollination to decomposition. Flies are nature's cleanup crew. They are key players in the decomposition process, breaking down organic matter like dead animals, plant material, and other debris. Certain fly species, such as blowflies and flesh flies, lay their eggs on decomposing matter. When the eggs hatch, the larvae, commonly known as maggots, consume the decaying material, accelerating its decomposition and recycling nutrients back into the ecosystem. While some flies feed on nectar and pollen like bees, others have more eclectic diets. For example, fruit flies are attracted to overripe or fermenting fruits, aiding in their decomposition. House flies are well known for their attraction to food waste, including leftovers, spoiled food, and organic waste. Their ability to consume and break down food waste plays a role in nutrient recycling and decomposition, contributing to the ecosystem's balance. Flies are also notorious for their affinity for animal and human excrement. Yuck! This behavior might seem unpleasant, but it serves an ecological purpose. By feeding on excrement, flies accelerate its decomposition, aiding in nutrient cycling and preventing the accumulation of waste in the environment. Over time, flies have evolved a fascinating set of mouthparts that are adapted to their specific feeding habits. Unlike mammals, which have teeth for chewing and grinding food, flies have specialized mouthparts that allow them to consume a wide range of liquid and semi-liquid foods without the ability to chew. The mouthparts of flies are often referred to as sponging mouthparts because they function like a sponge. Since flies don't have jaws or teeth for chewing, their mouthparts are designed to absorb and transport liquid substances. The labellum is the main component of a fly's mouthparts. It's a fleshy, retractable structure located at the tip of the proboscis, the long, tube-like structure extending from the fly's head. The labellum is covered with tiny hair-like structures called sensilla, which can detect and locate food sources. When a fly lands on a food source, it extends its proboscis and uses the labellum to explore the surface. The sensilla on the labellum help the fly detect moisture and potential food particles. If the substance is liquid or semi-liquid, the fly can use its labellum to absorb the substance through capillary action, much like a sponge soaking up liquid. When they encounter solid food, flies regurgitate saliva onto it. This saliva contains enzymes that start breaking down the solid food into a semi-liquid state. The fly then uses its labellum to suck up the softened food. Now that you know a little bit about the fly's anatomy, picture this. A fly lands on your sandwich. What's the first thing it does? Well, it starts spitting. Yes, you heard that right. Within a matter of seconds after landing, a fly can initiate its feeding process, which involves the regurgitation of digestive fluids onto your food to pre-digest it. Now that your sandwich is practically liquid gold, the fly uses its sponge-like mouthparts to slurp up the nutritious juices. This unique feeding process allows them to extract nutrients without the need for chewing. You have probably noticed that flies appear to rub their front legs together after landing on your food. Why is that? This behavior is essentially how a fly cleans or grooms its front legs. Flies use their legs to explore their environment, gather information about their surroundings, and locate sources of food. A fly's legs also play a role in their feeding process. Grooming helps clean their legs after feeding and prevents any residual digestive fluids from interfering with their ability to fly or sense their environment. Here's where it gets really unsettling. As we have already discussed, flies aren't exactly the cleanest creatures. So, when a fly lands on your food, it can bring along a whole party of bacteria, pathogens, and even allergens. These microorganisms can include harmful bacteria like E. coli, salmonella, and others which have the potential to make you sick. 
Now, before you swear off picnics forever, not every fly spells do. But the potential for contamination is real. Ingesting these unwelcome hitchhikers can lead to stomach upset, food poisoning, or worse. Infants, the elderly, and those with weakened immune systems are particularly vulnerable. So it's not just about a ruined meal, it's about your health too. But fear not. There are ways to protect your food and your health. For starters, you should keep your outdoor eating areas clean and free of trash and use covers or mesh screens to keep those pesky flies away. You should swiftly tend to spills and crumbs, as even small remnants can beckon flies. Be sure to seal trash receptacles firmly and adhere to a routine of disposal to repel flies allured by the scent of waste. Trim surrounding foliage near open-air dining areas to create an inhospitable environment for fly habitation. Harness the power of natural repellents like citronella, eucalyptus, or mint essential oils to craft an atmosphere flies find off putting. Additionally, exercise diligent pet waste cleanup. With these strategies at your disposal, you can fortify your defenses against the presence of flies, creating a more hygienic and enjoyable environment for dining and daily activities. So the next time a fly lands on your meal, remember the journey it's been on and the potential risks it might bring. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. See you in the next video.